All right, welcome back, everybody. This is our third uh, book club for Keys to Unlocking Your Inner Power. Well, I hope you had a good time uh, walking in the uh, shallow water because today we begin to go into the deep side of the pool. Chapters 4 and 5 takes us there. And so joining me tonight to discuss uh, chapters 4 and 5, again, Freddie Wright. Lawrence Wright and Shelley Ingram as well as myself. Well, you all, how do you feel? What's the difference between chapters one through three and now you've had a chance to read chapters four through five? <laughs> it's the equivalent of driving down a straight highway and now we're going through the curves. So. Yeah, <laughs> so, I like that. Yeah, it's, it's nice yeah. though. It's like wading in two, three feet of water then all of a sudden the you drop into the, the seven, eight, nine, twelve feet. You said the bottom falls out. The bottom falls out. <laughs> well, this is good because enlightenment and spiritual growth is a journey. And like with any journey, you need a map. Now, the map is not the territory, but a good map helps you to navigate the territory. We're trying to we're in the process of trying to evolve and develop our awareness, our consciousness. And in doing that, it's necessary that you have to have uh, an understanding of the various concepts, categories, and a construct. Uh, what we're talking about is a paradigm, uh, uh, a worldview, uh, uh, a, type of, a type of structure that allows you to put into place uh, ideas and concepts and, and perspectives that gives you a guideline of how to go and where you're going and then how do you know when you are there. And I think chapters 4 and 5 begin the process uh, beginning uh, giving us what is called the anatomy of the soul and then which is chapter 4 and then chapter 5 enlightenment. So um, it's going to be a little difficult for us to kind of go through everything because there's so much stuff in here but we will try to hit the high points and hit some of the, the great, the great uh, definitions and the great uh, outlines of information that we need uh, to be able to um, navigate our way uh, through our own journey in, into the uh, spiritual life. Um, and I think the first place to start is where she starts uh, and talk about our definitions. Mm -hmm. uh, Freddie, you and I were talking earlier about how you know people conceive of God, the oneness of God, um, the um, distinct manifestations of God or emanations of God, where we have God and then we have gods. Mm -hmm. right. So um, I'm going to start with you and say, well, what was your experience with that particular concept that she talks about here um, about what are God? I like the kind like what she wrote there. What? People normally say, what is God? She said, what are God, spirit, and source? Right. I mean, simply put, I mean, growing up, you're worshiping one God. You only, you, you only taught that there's a God. You're not taught that there are gods and that there, there's more play than just having one God. So, Was that kind of um, uh, shocking to you? How did, how did you, to, to read this, how did you initially respond to it? Well, uh, it wasn't shocking only because, you know, I'm a member of Grace Evangelical, but it re to read it, to see it, and to know that there are thousands, billions of gods, uh, yeah, it was kind of surprising, it was shocking. It was like, it was one of those wow moments. As I was reading, I had to stop and process before I got back into the text, but yeah, it was a wow moment for me, definitely. Right, All right. Anybody else want to share some insights on the idea of God, gods? Um, I guess I think the most important part to me about this section that she was talking about um, is the fact that people should make a, a distinction between, you know, the these different areas of a one whole, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I guess uh, that was what I liked the most about her um, 
you know, about God, the the Creator, you know, what which is, you know, as you said before, everything and no no thing. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and then everything else is an extension of that. That's everything right. and no thing. Right. You know. And I think that's where people get it twisted all the time when they start saying you worshiping other gods. Mm -hmm. No, I'm worshiping God through you. Right. I'm worshiping God through these trees, through the sun, through my spiritual parents, through other. It is all God and, and it's not me being sacrilegious or blasphemous or anything like that. Right. You know, it's, it's all one and the division of that is what has turned into our different religions and Right. sex and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's important um, because, uh, let, let me just say this offhand. There is no book written that can fully, and no book written, no person talking that can fully explain or express the infinity, the magnitude, the breadth, the depth of what we call God. Right. It is it is beyond human comprehension. What we are doing with language, we are trying to approximate, if you will, the best that we can. Mm -hmm. And uh, using revelation and logic and conversation um, and perspective. And I think that that's important to understand. So again, this is a map but the map is not the territory. So, at any point in time, even the, as soon as you think that you got it, you say, I got I understand God, then the source, the, the, the universe, the all, will show up and express itself in a way that is beyond you. Because the most, the most, to me, the most enlightening aspect of all this is that you too, are gods. Right. Whatever God is, it is also you. Mm -hmm. As above, so below. Um, I am, I like the, the uh, Exodus third three, Exodus chapter three, verse fourteen verse that says, I am that, comma, I am. In other words, every that that is, I am. Mm -hmm. So there's nowhere, there's no place you can go where God is not. God is one. But God also is many. In the same way as I said earlier, what? That you are one body, right. but you have many parts. Many parts. But you are one. Right. And you are many. Right. And so that's the beauty of the whole of the whole thing. Um, when we start talking about God. Um anybody else want to add anything to that? Well, like, um, I wanna quote something that she says in her book that goes along basically with what you guys have said. It said, God is many things to many people. Some people believe in only one God, while others believe in hundreds. Both are, are correct. So what or who is God? Yeah. And in the key reading, she says, God is beyond anything the human mind can even begin to conceive. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about this, we're talking about a word called emanation. You know, and so God extends or emanate itself in many forms. There's a there's an old phrase uh, that I think kind of fits here. It says God um, sleeps in the rock, stirs in the plants, awakens in the animal. Uh, excuse me. God sleeps in the rock, stirs in the plant, dreams. Uh, no, I'm wrong. Let me get it right. God sleeps in the rock. God. Uh, dreams in the plant, stirs or arouses in the animal, awakens in man. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, um, you you begin to understand the the depth and the breadth that we talk about when we begin to understand. You know, all is a manifestation and an emanation that flows from the source. Um, and just so people who may follow um, the Jewish and or Christian point of view in terms of God. Uh, we read this morning in church 
this passage is found in Psalms 136, uh, verse 1 and 2. It says, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of gods. So this is not a foreign concept um, to you know mainline mainline religion. Right. Yeah. And so I just want to put that in there. Um, another thing that I I, uh, I thought was very important, something that connects to something that we're doing here at the church, uh, where our theme is um, the year of the woman, and by that we're looking at exper ex exploring the divine feminine, is that he speaks about that the first emanation that uh, manifest itself from that oneness, that so that all was spirit, and the source is though that spirit source has a name. They call it Barbelith. Um, it is a feminine consciousness. That too also is in scripture, by the way. Mm -hmm. But um, but I think that's important to understand that there's a a, a source uh, um, um, from which all things. All things flow, and um, so just to talk about the mystery of God, um, I like to kind of like play with people's mind because um, to understand that God is God is everywhere, or should I say, God is now here and yet nowhere. In other words, God is beyond space and time. God knows all. And yet, God's no, God knows no thing, because God is beyond uh, our perspective and our awareness. It's beyond what we can even conceive and think. But yet, it is the source from which all perspectives and all things emanate. It's a very profound, profound point. Yeah. Now, so it says the source also cre created gods. And these gods are divine forces that were created to represent aspects of the Creator. And so, uh, in this, on this page 47, you will be able to understand that the different divisions of Creator, uh, Source, uh, Gods, and then eventually Souls. Souls. So, um, let's talk about the Soul. Let's talk about the Soul. Okay. What did anybody want to make a comment about what what aspect of her writing about the soul uh, challenged you most? Your soul or the soul? Mm, that's the whole rest of the chapter. <laughs> 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 You're talking about the anatomy of the soul. How do you? Because see, again, you're dealing with a kind of a diagram, if you will, a pattern mm -hmm. to understand how your soul, um, how soul fits into the whole thing. Now, we when we say soul. We're not talking about R and B, you know, rhythm and blues and that kind of thing. Something you can dance to, but it is connected, to be honest with you. Um, but to talk about soul, she says here, your soul is a massive being that creates incarnations of itself, such as you. Right. Yeah. That's one thing, you know. After you just broke it down and you know, pop up graphic here, okay? <laughs> you know, uh, the creator and. You know, then spirit and mm -hmm. source mm -hmm. and souls, but then you know she'd have to make this graphic like teeny tiny to fit in all of the different incarnations of your your soul or different aspects of your soul mm -hmm. that can exist on different dimensions. Mm -hmm. To you know, she said to be able to play out, um, you know, these different purposes to help that one unified soul evolve. Right. You know, to the next level. So it's not just this part of us here um, on Earth in this dimension that is working towards our evolution. And it also makes one. It makes me wonder. It makes one wonder. You know. You know where where is my soul now? Like what incarnation? What what, what am I? Like you know, am I the 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 fourth or am I the hundredth? You know, mm -hmm. incarnation of my own soul. You know. Yeah. Where am I in that process? You know? Well, you are on many different levels and dimensions. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the ways to think about this, you ever, you ever seen uh, what they call Russian dolls? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, where, kind of where you have yeah. one inside of the other. Oh, yeah. oh, they okay. get smaller and smaller. Right. Okay. That's, that's, that's kind of like what we're talking about. Where you have 
you know, this mm -hmm. bigger soul, but then that's another soul, Inside. but then that's mm -hmm. another soul, mm -hmm. that's another soul. So you have you have these um, um, like for example, you have like um, um, how can I put this? You have like a soul group, and then you may have a a soul. A soul, uh, well, say, let's say a, a, your, your soul family, and then you have a soul group, mm -hmm. and you have another larger uh, uh, groupings of souls together, and another larger one than that. Or to put it another way, uh, you have like, um, let's just keep it kind of kind of simple. Uh, you have like the Milky Way. Then within the Milky Way, you have our, um, you have various uh, solar systems. Mm -hmm. And within that solar system, you have our solar system. Mm -hmm. Then you have, which has all these nine planets in it. Mm -hmm. And think of, think of all this as souls right. breaking down, breaking right. down, breaking right. down. And then you have our planet. Mm -hmm. And on our planet, you have, you know, uh, mineral kingdom, you have animal kingdoms, right. you have humans. Okay. And then within the human family, you have this grouping of people. Mm -hmm. And within that group of people, you may have, like, a particular family. You know, so the the big point here is to understand that that what I call what what you call yourself yourself you're bigger than what you think you are. You're bigger than. In other words, you are all of that, and your potential is to be all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. To end up being, I mean, we get down to it because you get in later part of the book. The potential to be a, a solar system yourself. Right. We got a long way to go. <laughs> but the fact is, is that is that you're connected to all of that, and that's why uh, understanding systems and understanding uh, uh, astronomy and understanding all the, even down to the part even down to the part where you, when you go inside yourself, it's inside your own individual body. Mm -hmm. You have various systems, respiratory system, digestive system, mm -hmm. reproductive system, mm -hmm. skeletal system, and within that you have you have a, a, a system of uh, of an atom, which has a proton, a neutron, an electron, and we can go further deeper than that and go into quasars, bosons, all that. It's, you know, it's infinite, it's as infinite inwardly as it is externally. Mm -hmm. So there's no place you can go where God is not. Mm -hmm. God in you. Now that, yeah, yeah, you're going to be quiet after that. You're going to stop being man. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And, uh, there were a lot of points throughout both these chapters that had you like that. Kind of dumbfounded. Like, yeah, yeah. Now, how is all this connected? Because uh, this is part where I, I know many of y'all probably are very familiar with is uh, the, how is all this connected? How is all this energy connected? How do you, how do you begin to feel? How do you begin to feel their connectedness or begin to uh, have a sense of oneness with all that we just explained? And I think she does a, a, a great thing to connect to what is called channels, energy channels, or soul energy, central channels, and things like that. You know, where you have, like, uh, we learn in, in, in Kim Wild Food teaching with Dr. Gibson, you have, like, the upper Dantian, the middle Dantian, and then the lower Dantian. Do you remember the guys that are connected to that? The number of guys that are connected to the lower, the middle, and the upper? Um, it is. I think it's 25 at the lower. 25 in the middle. I think it's 25. It's 25 in the middle. middle. Yeah. And it's, then I think it's what, uh, 9, nine in, the, in, the, in the lower. 9 in the lower, 25 and 5. So you have what is called, what is, in, what is outer is also inner. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, in your upper Dantian, you have five guys that house there, uh, that are palace there. You have in the middle, you said 25. 25. That connects to your heart, your lungs. You know, up here in your head, the upper Dantian's energy channels, They that connects to um, your, um, obviously your pineal gland, your hypothalamus, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And then in the lower, the digestive system, the reproductive system. And here's something that Dr. Gibson said that's so, so profound, is that disease and death begin when the, those, those inner guys that control those organs of your body begin to leave. Through our behavior, through our attitudes, we, it no longer becomes a place where they can inhabit. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And so I think she validates this by saying, you know, that basically it's a connection that is there in the beginning. And so then when you do or don't do certain things, that connection is broken with those inner gods and mm -hmm. you know that connection is gone but it mm -hmm. can be reestablished yeah it can be you know rebuilt yeah. and reconnected and the, the thing about it is is that um she mentions uh uh you know the what's called the micro the microscopic orbit of these channels in terms of it connects to breathing the breathing of moving your breath um from the from uh, well around you, mm -hmm. you know, get that orbit where you take that energy from your breathing in to you breathe out, and then you move that breath through all those channels, and then you bring it back around mm -hmm. and you take it back in for the next breath. You know, there's something that Dr. Gibson said that when we breathe, we should we should we should uh, breathe like um, uh, when you breathe in, uh, you breathe in God and you exhale love. And you move that energy through your body, and you 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 visualize it moving through those um, those channels that we just talked about, and you move it and connect to it. I think that's a very important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's kind of move on uh, in this, and let's talk about the chakras, mm -hmm. the chakras. I think we're all pretty familiar with that y'all can actually look at the chart over there and see the chakras. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have talked about seven chakras. She mentions eight. Yeah. Anybody want to want to uh, give some insights on the chakras that you that you um, remember or you want to talk about? Uh, well, let me let me just let me say before we get started. Let me just say what are chakras? Chakras are wheels of light. Chakras are wheels of light. They are like uh, and there are many. There are more than eight chakras. There are more than eight chakras, but the eight main or she says eight main chakras. Um, that starts from the root to the crown, mm -hmm. and what what it is is that you have like, at least from what I understand, from a little biology that I know, you have like um, uh, the endocrine system, which which um, uh, you have like these, uh, you know, the prostate gland, the testes, you have or the ovaries if you're a woman, you know, your kidneys, your your, your pancreas, up into your thymus gland, which is around where the heart chakra is. Your, your thyroid gland, and then into your uh, pineal gland. So we get it. And so the chakra system connects to your physical body in that way. In other words, what we understand in that of the body is that you have a soul, your own individual soul. And oh yeah, one other thing I thought was very important that she mentioned here is that not all your not all your soul is in your physical body. There are parts of your soul that's above that is that that does not incarnate into your physical form. That's important. That means that you are bigger than you think you are. Mm -hmm. You exist on, you know, a higher level of dimension of where your of where your soul material comes from. When uh, a god takes soul takes takes um, uh, your soul, mix it with its uh, materials, and uh, and then creates you, and so mm -hmm. I think I think that's very, very very profound. But getting back to the chakras, let's talk about the eight chakras that she mentioned, and let's start with the uh, root chakra. Why is the root chakra so important? Well, because it's your base. It's you know the the grounding of you know your. Your stability, your your beginning. Your How would you know that you have a root chakra dysfunction in your life? Well, see, that's what I wanted to you know bring a point about because I don't know that we're gonna have time to go through all of the chakras and still you know make it through chapter five also. But the thing I want point I wanted to make about chakras is that for the most part, if you look up information about the chakra system you know, on the internet, then it's you're going to find pretty unified explanations. Mm -hmm. Colors, um, you know, um, organs, all those things that are associated with them. Um, but that is the thing that I think is the most important about the chakra system, something we've talked to 
um, the children here at this church about, as well as, you know, the adults and, and friends that you can talk to anyone about, is the fact that if your chakras um, or the condition of your chakras is related to physical and psychological mm -hmm. and emotional problems that you may have, and you can go back mm -hmm. and, and look at that correlation so that you know that if you're having certain physical problems, you can probably bet that that chakra is not fully opened or, you know, mm -hmm. is, is having problems. And that, it just makes me, makes me think that it's just so important for you to have a, a to try to establish within yourself a calm, a peace about yourself, not mm -hmm. try to hold on to frustrations and, and anger to the point where it's hurting your, your, the inside of you like that, your mm -hmm. chakras, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's causing them to, to dim out on you, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. said, it says that your chakras are so supposed to be bright and luminous lights and for you to, you know, hold on to, to this physical world like that and allow yeah, every day, you know, life to hurt you in that way. See, the thing that the thing is, I think people need to understand is that you are not just a physical body. Right. Yeah. You know, you're not just a physical body. Right. And, and and a lot of times, I think in our in our in terms of this consciousness, uh, people tend to think that their disease or their dysfunction begins in the physical body. It begins at your ethereal body or your soul body, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that inward part of you that begins to have a corrupt thought or you hold on to a dis-ease feeling mm -hmm. and you begin to block the light mm -hmm. uh, uh, from coming into you. Uh, like I say, chakras are wheels of light. Um, I think it's important too to keep this in a, in a very grounded sense. Uh, there are certain practices that you can do or rituals that you can do that can uh, help clear uh, and maintain a certain balance and openness with each chakra. Uh, and I'm just going to say this one thing uh, about a few chakras. For example, like your, your root chakra, that, like Shelly said, that grounds you. Okay. Now, how do you get that root chakra? How do you have that groundness in the root chakra? What ritual do you do? Well, one of the things that people do is that they have like these um, uh, rites of passage uh, ceremonies when a child is born, uh, bar mitzvah if you if you're in a Jewish faith, uh, baptism if you're in another uh, Christian faith mm -hmm. or whatever, where you welcome the child into the world. Well, what you're doing, you're grounding the child in a community, in a family, in a context. Right. The heart chakra. Well, obviously that's a chakra that that collects data of your love and your connectedness to other people mm -hmm. and so if you're having a problem you know like a broken heart well that's a heart chakra issue mm -hmm. and then the crown chakra all of this way you start making your connection to things that are spiritual now you know i mean but that's where it is at and you know um so information is coming in from the sun from uh visions and dreams and stuff. Well those are those are like in your sixth chakra, third eye chakra or whatever, and your crown chakra issues that are going on. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important uh that people that people deal with that um in terms of recognizing that that's your we call it in the Christian church, that's putting on your full armor. Yeah. That's putting on your full armor where you begin to go through the process of lining up your chakras. You know, you can pray through each chakra. You can go up, you can come down. So I think those, those are those are pretty good tools and things to understand. Anybody else want to add anything else out of this before we move on? Um, I think, uh, you know, while we were talking about the that this is a really important um, aspect of, of this book. I know from personal experience that it is. I've had personal experience with clearing out blockages and moving that uh, spiritual energy mm -hmm. around. So um, if you don't have the book, if you aren't reading the book, then is you know go ahead and get the book. She has some exercises in here, some mm -hmm. things that you can go through. But further study, find out more information about um, your central channels and yeah. your and your it's other channels. Mm -hmm. um, find out uh, more information about your chakras and how to work on them, improve them, um, clear them, um, and also your nadis. 
as you know, um, we have had lots of information from Dr. Gibson about and Miss Kathy about uh, clearing out those channels, about clearing out your your blockages that you have um, throughout your spiritual body, mm -hmm. and it is everything. It is everything. It is a difference. There is a huge difference when you have a blockage you may not even realize that you have. Um, like Freddie was saying, you know, letting go of, of, of anger, but it, it becomes more than that. Not only, you know, forgetting that you're angry about something or letting something go, but actually making a peace with that and moving that energy that you may have not be thinking about it anymore right. oh, but sure, that sure. energy still being there moving it out now there's a practice that I know that you have done uh, from one of the seminars you attended with uh, Dr. Gibson in Charlotte uh, without necessarily going through the process uh, but the fact is doesn't it not cause you that you're not trying to deny the negative feeling right. like if it's anger right it, 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 what are you trying to do with it? You're trying it's, to um, what? And this is the Dantian cleansing exercises, and you go through each Dantian, um, but it is actually embracing and acknowledging the emotions, uh, lower emotions, you know, that people try to get away from. You embrace it, you actually want to embody that emotion, and then change that energy and take it back out of you. Now you remember what I was speaking this morning? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, yeah you know, that's about, right there. you know, he said that, you know, you have, you, you're unhappy, you're angry. You know, why are you angry? What are you going to do about your anger? If you don't do the practice, the negative anger or the negative feeling, which is anger or jealousy, is going to dominate you. Right. So what you're saying is that you don't deny that you're upset. Right. You don't deny that you're envious or jealous or angry. What you do is that you you actually acknowledge it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you transform it. Right. You transform it. And there and, and say there's a practice. What do you call that practice again? What it's the Dantean cleansing. It's a Dantean cleansing practice where you begin to cleanse that energy. Uh, so that it won't cause any type of, uh, you know, blockage or it actually cause disease, you know. Right, right. yeah. And um, Kelly actually also talks in um, the next chapter in, in Enlightenment about as she started to go through her Enlightenment process, um, you know, she began that chapter with a quote where uh, the young man had gone through, they said, oh, you're enlightened, you know, mm -hmm. how you feel, and he right. was like, like garbage, you yeah. know, because, yeah. you know, she said that the enlightenment makes the things that were wrong that much more obvious. Right, right. That's why it's enlightened. <laughs> right. Because He's when like, you are oh, when you said that, yeah, she said that. Yeah, she said that. She became more enlightened. It was like a gift and a curse. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, you experience samadhi or a type of peace. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, like, what do you call it, an inspired or enlightened thought mm -hmm. and everything. But at the same time, you you then begin to see areas of your life that are undone. Mm -hmm. Right. And, I, and, and see, to me, Man, I'm glad y'all mentioned that because that is so important because people think that enlightenment or in some phrase, some terms, uh, some places they call it sanctification or whatever, mm -hmm. um, they think, or actually, the word awareness is related to Buddha. The Buddha, that means, that means uh, uh, the awakened one. Right. So people think that when you're in that kind of state that, that uh, you don't see any type of um, shadow. Right. As a matter of fact, you is. are more, you are more in tune with the shadow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think people think that you know, if as I become enlightened and when I go to heaven and I'm gonna leave mm -hmm. all y'all alone, I ain't gonna have to worry about you know, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna have to worry about being hungry or cold or <laughs> or thirsty, and I'm gonna have, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have everything because when I become enlightened then I'm going to hit the lottery the same day. It makes yeah. make you think about, I don't know, it just comes to my mind, but it's like getting up and dressing yourself in the dark 
And you know you have clothes on. Out. You know you have clothes on. You know you can walk outside and you know you're you're clothed and nobody's gonna be like oh. But when you cut the lights on, what is, you got a mess. You know what you right. know. You know what you look like. Now. Shirt on. Uh, button, oh, I mean, yeah. Shirt button wrong. Shoes right. on, two yeah. different shoes on. You know. Yeah. 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 Now you know one what you really look like. You got stripes and checkers and all kind yeah. of crazy right. stuff going on. You just you just become aware of the mess. And that's that's a very good point, Freddie, because the point is that when you are beginning an enlightenment process, the first thing you begin, you begin to see just how backwards or undone you are. Yeah. And that's a help because it allows you now to what to focus on within yourself. And I think that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. Let's jump into this thing about spiritual parents. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's deal with the spiritual parents. Now... Oh, yeah. to to go into the part about spiritual parents, I know we skipped all over the different uh, development tiers of the soul, but yeah. you know the part um, going into spiritual parents, the bridge from the soul to spiritual parents that I like. She said the energy created is beneficial for not only the human soul. Mm -hmm but also many other aspects of the spiritual world including the spiritual parents who helped create it and that's something that she talked about through this section about the fact that not only are we trying to grow and develop our soul for ourselves but our spiritual parents created us to help them and it's yeah. something that we talked about before when we talked about you know the fact that um the gods created wine for for them as an, for us to give an offering to them and as we've seen in a lot of um uh movies about um, mythology how the people always talk about the gods created man to worship them so that mm -hmm. they can get that power and that mm -hmm. energy from mm -hmm. them you know and so you know that relationship that we have to our spiritual parents we're much more important to them than I think we give ourselves credit for. Yeah. 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 And, and in the big picture, the question you ask, well, why is the one, the all, doing all this? Because, like we said about the Russian dolls, you have this, these dolls within a doll, within a doll, within a doll. So what's the whole purpose? And I think that's very important uh, for us to kind of conceptualize here. Why are you here? Why are you in this body in this world as you are. What is God doing? Well, here's the point. God is exploring itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's like you and I are like uh, agents of the one exploring its own territory. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that I guess in one sense we do within ourselves where when we get in contact and know ourselves, there are aspects of our inner self that is exploring the greatness of ourself. And so God is knowing itself through us. That's a very profound point to think about. Mm -hmm. And it brings us into, that's what enlightenment is all about because you you are exploring the areas of the unknown, uh, the unexplored yourself and coming back with information. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, look at the spiritual parents. The spiritual parents. In order for us to go beyond just human, to go beyond just, uh, let me say top back, in order for us to go beyond just uh, a, a, a one cell organism or a virus or a bacteria, right. to go beyond an insect or an animal, eventually to become a human, to become a human soul, it requires that a God has to take your human soul and or your human potential and or soul material and connect it or integrate it with its God material and then to be able to merge those two together where now you are an aspect of it. It is an aspect of you. You are now God and human. And I think that that's a, that's a very profound thing. And that that becomes Whatever that your parent is, you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was uh, that was something that I was um, looking at, and it's something Dr. Gibson has been talking a lot about. Um, 
the past few months, uh, he spoke a lot about um, finding, if you don't know your spiritual parents, finding a God that you can connect with that looks like you, that has similar interests and traits as you. And it's the same thing, you know, that Kelly was describing mm -hmm. here. When you know your spiritual parent, then you start to say, oh, you know, I do that or, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, have the, those things in common with your spiritual parents as you start to learn about mm -hmm. them. And that's why she was saying, you know, that if you know your spiritual parents, it, it really helps you in your development but like I said something that Dr. Gibson was saying that if you do not know your spiritual parents find a guy who you can connect with who you have this connection these, these certain type of feelings, traits yeah, mm -hmm. that you share that you them. share right mm -hmm. I want to say I want to say you know with these with, without even knowing who your spiritual parents are to know this kind of gives one purpose you know, yeah. I mean, a lot of people are, what are we here for? What's my purpose? And it, it kind of, for me, it gives me purpose. It lets me know that, you know, like you said earlier, it's like you're an agent. It's like you're here to explore not only for for you, but for the gods. You know, right. their, their experience. And they, like, here's one you. thing, though, uh, Fred, understand that they are you. Right. Right. They are you. That's, in that's, that's the form of, of you. In the human form of you. And... And so, to know that right. personal connection. See, one of the things that I, I um, you know, that I looked at one time, and I thought was so, so significant, um, in the stories in the Bible of Jesus, he always referred to uh, his parent as his father. My father. My father said this, and he says, he told, told that when you pray, go to your father, your father. He said, go to my father. He said, for you to go to your father. Mm -hmm. He asked a question one time and he says, well, people ask him, say, your mother, and your mother and your brother and your sisters out there. He said, well, who is my family? He said, those who do the will of my father. So what you see there in that text is that, that Jesus expressed an intimate connection to his father, which was in heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing that you and I have to be about and we have to do to have that intimacy because like father like son mm -hmm. and I think um, you know going back to what Freddie was saying a minute ago about you know being agents and having this purpose when you think about <laughs> about yourself mm -hmm. in this way that you are this God this thing, incarnation of this, of this God this mm -hmm. goddess doesn't it make you think about everything, all the choices that you make, you know, you look at things and you say when 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 you get ready to have a reaction to something, then, you know, you say, wait a minute. Constantly. That's not, you know, uh, that's and not. And to have a relationship, have. have a relationship in a knowledgeable sense of your divine parent. I think that, um. You know, I think that's very important, you know, and I think that's very that's very significant to help evolve your spiritual life because without that knowledge, you're not going to evolve mm -hmm. in everything. Now, we need to throw in here, too, that there are, what, four types of um, uh, yes. uh, uh, spiritual parents? Four types of, yeah, of uh, soul that you can have. Four types uh, of soul that you can have. Right. An yeah. angelic soul. An angelic a celestial so soul, elemental, elemental soul, and demonic soul. <coughs> and somehow know that those four souls, those entities combine to create to create themselves in you. Something to think about. Yes, sure is. Let's talk about the composition of the soul. One thing, one thing that I uh, uh, I like in this book, and um, obviously Dr. Gibbs has taught in the Living Soul Course, is um, that the soul has weight. Your soul has color, um, and your soul has uh, an age. Mm -hmm. and the older, the heavier. You have a soul. Your soul age. Do you know how? Do you know um, the condition of your soul? In other words, is it a dark? Is it, are you emanating a dark color? Are you 
is your soul light? Not like L I G H T, but is it like, uh, you know, it doesn't weigh much. Mm -hmm. Okay? The heavier your soul is, uh, I guess it would be the older your soul is. Mm -hmm. And so, um, um, you know, studies have been done just to know that you have a soul. I think it was in 1910, I'm not very sure, maybe 1905. They wouldn't, cause a lot of, cause from some, some scientific point of view, people don't believe that, that, uh, that you're just a body. You know, when you're dead, you're dead. You don't have no, no soul, no awareness or consciousness after this, this physical life is over. Mm -hmm. But they have actually weighed, taken care of, taken uh, 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 concern for, you know, air pressure, uh, um, wasted on the body when a person dies and everything. They've actually weighed uh, a person to see if the, you know, you die, your soul leaves your body. To see if there's a weight difference to the body and their worth. Mm -hmm. So something literally, when you when you person transitions, uh, something literally lifts out of your body and changes the weight of your body, mm -hmm. and that is your soul. Soul age is a uh, these these things have been measured. Um, um, your soul age. How old is your soul? Are you a young soul or are you an old soul? And now people, we people may look at that and say that's kind of off. But the truth is, men, children do come here, and you say, yeah. children like they like they've been here for a minute, like they they didn't come here um, for the first time. Yeah. That's an old soul. That's an old soul. Yeah, yeah. And so in this book, uh, any I remember anything she said specifically about the age of the soul? That uh, a young soul was under a thousand years old. Uh, the average, average soul, soul lives to what? 35,000. 35, 35, 35, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. A soul can, a soul can disintegrate. Right. A soul can die. Right. Soul death. Mm -hmm. But the goal of the soul is to become what? One with the creator. Or to become so, immortal. I mean, more. Well, yeah. yeah. The, That's what the goal is to. Yeah, yeah, well the soul will become immortal. That can happen after you, you know, become enlightened and, right. and move on. But right. your ultimate goal is right. to go back to source. That's right. And so and so let's move transition that into the idea of the various components of the soul. Okay. All right. Okay. And so the now first one and being the spiritual name. Okay. Um, what spiritual name? What's, what's important about a spiritual name? The spiritual name, the sound mm -hmm. with which your soul was created. Um, I think the important thing about the spiritual name is, um, I guess, the the weight and value that it holds in, in you knowing it mm -hmm. and you sharing that with somebody else. And if you find that. out your spiritual name, don't tell anybody unless you want to be connected to that person or possibly give that person power over you. Control of your soul. You know. Your spiritual name, your spiritual name is your spiritual fingerprint. It, 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 has, it, has, a, it has a name, a word, a sound, uh, a form, you know, a signature in other words, and it has a number. Mm -hmm is how you are specifically identified right. by the Creator your and your spiritual parents in particular. Right. And, and Shelly's actually right, is that um, that's something that you hold like your PIN number. Right. You know, you don't, ask, you don't want people to have access to that. So that's one part of your, of, your, um, of, your, of your component of your soul, is your spiritual name. Another part is called the Nomen, okay? And you want to talk about that? Um, the nomen mm -hmm. contains the names of particular aspects of your source and the gods who are your spiritual parents. Right. So in other words, your within within your soul, um, their name is written on your soul. Mm -hmm. Their name is written. So that's 
letting you know what family you belong to, what soul family you belong right. to. Right. And I like the way that she described this part because she said it's like, you know, where you take your um, spiritual, you know, DNA from your parents, mm -hmm. uh, you're from your soul parents, your spiritual Spirit parents, parents mm -hmm. and then also what comes into play is your DNA of when you incarnate into your human. each time mm -hmm. with those parents and it comes together, which is why one time at a, a seminar before, Dr. Gibson talked about the fact that each time you incarnate, you look similar. You know, which is why there are all these pictures of celebrities floating around. Yeah, They're like, yeah. you know, you know, have uh, y'all seen Brad that? Pitt, yeah. you know, seen so that where, like, Brad Pitt yeah. and, and Jay Z have been alive since you know the 1800s mm -hmm. and stuff. Right. You know, because there are pictures of people that mm -hmm. look like Just them, like them yeah. and it's because uh, <clears throat> that resemblance to their spiritual parent is the same. Mm -hmm. And then each time when you come back, even though you have another parent, so it's like you still got the same daddy. And just each time they have different moments, so right, you still right. kind of look the same. Take yeah, a little bit, from him. <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So, so we so we, so we cover spiritual, the spiritual name, the nomen, now the actors. Right, okay. that's my favorite. Part. Why that's so favorite for you? <laughs> I, I love I love the part about the actors, um, because you know it has your everything, your every, every, Experience. every information that could happen, that did happen, that will happen. But my favorite part of it, um, as I've heard Dr. Gibson explain before and um, oh, Kelly true. also explained, um, the part about your act is being like a CD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my favorite thing. Because people always talk about um, free will, and then they always talk about uh, destiny and this is supposed yeah, to happen, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, this is this is supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it in this aspect of it being a CD or several CDs yeah. with thousands of hundreds of thousands of tracks on each yeah. one, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that um, our dear friend Crystal and I talked about this one day, I was on the phone with her. And I was at a stop sign. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, I got so excited because we had <laughs> obviously, we had obviously just talked about this, but I was so excited because I told her, I said, Crystal, if I make a right at this stop sign <laughs> instead of a left, yeah. my whole life changes. changes. That's right. It's, it's a whole different track, whole it's different like, CD. It's like going from it's track like one I, to track 10. It's right. like, it's like I, it's a I got a, a six disc changer and yeah. I'm at this stop sign and I was on mm -hmm. one and now I'm pushing six and now I got a whole, you know, another set of, my whole Experiences. life changed just because I made a different turn mm -hmm. at the stop sign. Then everything sh goes different or whatever. It's that's, that's, literally, that's literally true. Yeah. Because before I even knew this, when I was like uh, 19 years old, I did that. I actually came to a stop sign, and that thought came to my mind. Mm -hmm. I hadn't, I definitely didn't know anything about this, <laughs> but something in me felt that if I turned <clears throat> left, my life would have a certain experience. Mm -hmm. If I turned right, it would be a different experience. And it's something that I think we think about all yeah. the time because people tell you, you know, in little different things all the time, you know, take a different route to work, just, you know, to kind of mm. give your life just some spice and difference and stuff. Just don't do the same thing every yeah. day. But one and thing it does tell you, you though. you're getting the same results. But one thing, but one thing it does uh, point out to you is the power of choice. Yeah. And to really think about it, and to really ponder that, which is the reason why you communicate with your spiritual parents. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, to think about the, 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 the power of a choice, mm -hmm. because at the moment of decision, your destiny is shaped. Mm -hmm. yeah. And every decision. <laughs> every decision. It takes you to another. Now, the good part about it is, it's a circuitous route, but the fact that you come back to where yeah. you're supposed to be. Right. right. But, but the fact is, is that just realize that Man, instead of you know taking twenty years to get to this point, man, I could take. It yeah. could take you and know. see, yeah, that's the other thing that's you know amazing about the act is it's like you know, okay, I was gonna get to this point, mm 
where I know these things that I know now. But had I not done this or done this differently, you know, you could have gotten there at a different, and it makes you, like you said, really, really think about the decisions and the choices you make. Mm -hmm. I think about my um, my baby brother and like Flo said last week, I know he's not watching this, hey Jordan. <laughs> but, you know, um, when when he got ready to go to college, when he graduated high school, we wanted him to go to one school, he wanted to go to another one. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he wanted to go to that school, he went to that school, he shouldn't have went to that school. And he ended up having well, to go say, to the Don't one. say he shouldn't have gone. Well, <laughs> okay, so it took him like <laughs> all over here off <laughs> track right. to where we wanted him to go in the first place. His life would have been simpler yeah, had he done what his sister told him to do in the see, first place. that's the problem <laughs> because he is here he is here to have his unique experience I know, for yeah, his I know. soul but it's the kind of thing that you think about when you think about the actors like you said that you have you know this parameter of mm -hmm. of this is going to happen mm -hmm. in this lifetime it's just how are you going to get to right. it right yeah. and the, 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 it's always uh, y'all got to understand it, it's, it's always has been a kind of a a mystery mm -hmm. of how like we say, God knows all, mm -hmm. and yet at the same time, if God knows all, then why am I praying? Am I am I praying to yeah. change uh, the will of God? Yeah. Um, what do I really have choice? Mm -hmm. You know. But I think the balance here is that is that yes, prayer or free will and predestination or determination of God's will and everything do correspond to one another, they run parallel to one another. Right. Mm -hmm. And in the sense that obviously God knows because God knows every potential choice right. that can be and that will be and so there's no surprise. But the other part of it is, is like you said, you have this CD with these 10 tracks on it and you can take track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, any one you choose to take, but at the same time, no matter what track you take, you will always end up in accordance with mm -hmm. the will and the direction of your spiritual parent mm -hmm. right. and everything. And so, in that sense, though your though your though your life has choice, there's also a certainty about it. Mm -hmm. Right. And yet, the joy of being of not knowing it. Is that you have the experience of saying, "Okay, I'm gonna create. I'm gonna, I'm going to create this experience," you know, and therefore you choose track three. Right. Now, my thing is, once you choose track three, own it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't go back and say, "I made a mistake. I yeah, wish yeah. I hadn't done that." Mm -hmm. Own the experience. Learn from the experience. That's what I would suggest. Anyway, that's that's right. continue. Mm -hmm. uh, we did the actors. So what was left? Um, Words of five power. Of uh, it's one before that, isn't it? No. No, no, okay, they're prima. Yeah, Words of Power is next. Words of Power. Okay, now this is one I like a lot myself. That's one I like to mm -hmm. Because this is the one that allows you to do a lot of magical and wonderful things. Mm -hmm. You have 617 facets to your soul. And on each facet are various Words of Power. Words of Power for care of different functions. I mean, natural functions, human functions. Like digestion and... Mm -hmm. Uh, other parts of your body that you that you do and it's to carry out this breathing and all that kind of stuff but then there are words of power that can allow you to heal you know if you read the Bible again I think that's a reference point that we can all share okay Moses uh, as the story goes uh, when the Red Sea parted he used the word of power mm -hmm. uh, Jesus when he raised people from the dead or when he did a miracle, he spoke a word of power. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are billions of words of power. And you have at least 617 on encoded in you on your soul. That means that if you knew words of power, if you knew words of power, uh, various words of power, man, just think of the things you could do 
in life. Okay. You know? Yeah. They say abracadabra, amen is a word, a word to power. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting. Wish I could say more, but I can't. I'm bound by secrecy. <laughs> okay. okay, so moving on to <laughs> the Prima. 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 Okay. Which uh, is uh, composed of a small amount of pure temporal energy yeah, that acts fire. as a catalyst of creation. That's your fire. And combined with everything, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Stimulates the creation of matter, right? Yeah. So I would encourage people to, uh, if you, when you are reading this book, like I have done, this is probably my, um, I don't know, my third time or fourth time reading chapter four. I, 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 to me, it's important to understand the anatomy of the soul like doctors understand Gray's anatomy of the body. Mm -hmm. It's important to have a type of um, diagram in your mind of how your soul is constructed. It helps you, in my opinion, to, to do what chapter five is about the process of enlightenment right. and the various things you need to do um, as it relates to um, uh, developing parts of your soul, working on parts of your soul. Why is that important? Because ultimately you and I have the potential to develop a light body, right. a solar body, a diamond body. You and I have that potential to begin the process of enlightenment. So let's talk about that real quick. Um, um, compared to chapter four, chapter five is like, uh, you know, coming back into water you can stand up in, <laughs> at least for me. But, um, uh, but I think it's important that we understand that this is not a um, overnight process right. of becoming enlightened. I think, I think many times, um, People get caught up in comparing, they get caught up in, in um, measuring and wondering, which is it's understandable, but it's a slow process. It's a slow process, mm -hmm. you know, and you can see why, because there are parts of us that really resist enlightenment. I mean, think about it. reading all this, just think, just reading this and trying to memorize it, uh, let us know I'm trying to become it, it's a work, isn't it? It sure is. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine, do you really want to be enlightened? Yes. I mean, if you if I had to give you the choice of um, blue pill, red pill, wouldn't you want to just stay asleep? Too late. We just want to. Wouldn't you just want to? I mean, wouldn't you just really just stay in bed and you know and be comfortable knowing what little you do know and just say it's gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. It'd be easier than when. Why do you? Let me ask you this. Why do you want any of you? Why do you want to be enlightened? You think this is a, like a, you know, nice conversation you can have around the table and talk about and stuff and say, you know, we enlightened. I like to watch Oprah and listen to Deepak, Deepak <clears throat> Chopra. You know, I think for me personally, it's it's too late. It's, what you mean? It's too late. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, know you know, no, it it is. It, it's too late. It's too late. Right. It's too late. Like Flo said, once you start on a certain path, it's you. You want to. You just keep going. It, you, it's like a self-propelling thing. It's not. Why aren't more people? It's not a stop because why aren't more you people? Have, I think question. you have to get why to a certain point. Why aren't more people? Why aren't more people? Uh, choosing enlightenment versus being comfortable with religion because you have to get to a certain point first I feel you have what to, you mean when you say get to a certain I, point? I feel that you have to uh, grow to a certain point you have to develop make it a certain connection something has to come online okay. that is propelling you forward first you know I mean you know at at one point you know having a um, academic understanding of things was enough for me you know as you know when I was a child and I was in school like my children now they they want to you know make good grades and, mm -hmm. and that's what's important to them they need to you know go and and get their book work done and all mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and and then as you keep going, 
you keep you know you keep moving forward for some people that academic understanding is enough mm -hmm. and for some people that religious understanding is I'm, enough. I'm gonna come back to you but I'm gonna ask um, Florence and, um, and, and Freddie here you know man this is not really this is what we're talking about here is not really easy stuff I mean I mean you really could either be um, Deacon in some church or something like that, or you know, carrying out basic religious functions, uh, or just watching TV on Sunday afternoon, and everything. You know, you could be like director of the choir and just you know sing, you know, um, church songs. This had nothing. You see, nothing in this book is about that. Yeah. Right. So I'm asking you, if you, I mean, you don't have to feel your whole guts about your life nothing like that. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying. But man, why are you here? Why why are you studying this book? What about this information that got you here? Even fooling with me at this church and everything. Because this is not. I promise you, man. Um, I understand why a lot of people would rather uh, sing songs, you know, do the bug dance in church and everything, versus try to talk about <laughs> stuff like this. Because this is work. Right. And that's that's what I want to. That's kind of where I was gonna go with it. It's it's easier uh, to not become enlightened. It's easy. I think a lot of people would rather for life to be easy. I think they would rather be told. I think that you know how to worship, what to worship, you know what to wear, what songs we're gonna sing, what to believe. I think uh, it's easier that way. Well, uh, uh, who wants to go through life enlightened? And what we were speaking on earlier, and knowing what a mess their life is in, mm -hmm. when when they can go to church and have the reverend tell them, you know, you know it's going to be okay. All you got to do is 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 clap your hands two times and turn around and, and tell you tell your neighbor it's going to be okay. Tell your neighbor, tap your neighbor, tell them it's going to be okay. And then, <laughs> and then here's and then let's raise the offering. I think they <laughs> I think they would rather it, it be a uniform process for them. This is this is their everything. They don't have to think about it. it it's just something that they follow. They, they, they're given, you know, instead of them going in the kitchen and cooking the food for themselves, they, they sit down and let someone else give them the food. They're just, you eat this yeah. and like it. What about you, Florence? I mean, you could, you know, you could just be concerned with just being a good wife and a mother and, and stuff, but this is beyond that. What you here for? Well, I've done my, feel like I've done my share of church hopping and church listening and when I came here, it was totally different, you know. Honestly, and, and not definitely not trying to put down anyone's church, but when you go to certain churches, you know when the hollering is going to start. <laughs> okay. And when it starts, it's like, oh, okay, I, I haven't really learned anything. And then the things that are talked about, I've been knowing of those things since I was a child. You know, a teenager was really when I started paying attention in church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've been knowing those things since I was a teenager growing up. And so now I am an adult. I am a wife. I am a mother. And I teach other children. So now it's like, okay, what what's next? It, there has to be more. And well, so, let me tell you what that more is. Mm -hmm. In the same way when we read in the Bible about Jesus transforming himself or transfiguring himself, uh, revealing his light body. You know, his fifth dimensional form. Because the development of the enlightenment process of the light body begins in the third dimensions. There's, there is what is called a primordium, a, a divine embryo in us. And that if it receives proper nourishment, light information. Uh, in time, a analog of your light body establishes itself in the sun. Okay, and when fully developed, you have this light body that's able to, uh, as it continues to grow and become a solar body, is able to move in multiple dimensions. Mm -hmm. You know, that's your potential to be. When we, when we say things like "be like Christ." Mm -hmm. We're talking about you becoming a Christ, you becoming um, and developing your light body, whereby your very flesh and blood of your body becomes transformed 
able to uh, move through third dimensional density like a ghost walking through a wall. It's like being able to travel to other dimensions. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about doing. Mm -hmm. And to me, um, in, in enlightenment is really that, is that you becoming a body of light. You becoming a body of light. Not just mentally, but also physically. You become transformed. Um, uh, to put this in a, uh, a kind of context that we, that we in the Christian experience talk about, you're talking about the translation of the saints, or what they call the rapture, where your body, your body, your physical body, becomes a celestial body, an immortal body. Right. You know, where you never uh, experience death again. You know, and uh, which is what we had talked about a couple of weeks ago. You know, about that activating that immortality gene. It means becoming developing your light body where you where you you matter of fact you don't even have to even come back here unless you choose to in the third dimension. Yeah. That to me, uh, for me, is everything. It's, and it's more even beyond that to be honest with you, what she talks about in chapter uh, five. But I know our time has kind of uh, uh, progressed and we've covered so much. Chapter four was a lot to digest. Yeah, right. It was a lot to digest. And I just want to encourage Anybody and everybody who is interested in your spiritual growth to truly uh, obviously buy the book Keys to Unlocking Your Inner Power by Kelly Larson. And I want to encourage you to really take time and spend time. Don't run through the book or rush through the book, but truly spend time um, studying uh, chapter four. We're going to pick up with chapters five and six next week, talking about uh, the power of the will and the power of thought. I think that's what it is. Let me make six sure. No, uh, uh, six and seven. Sorry, chapter six and seven. Um, the the mind and the ego. Now, that's going to be good. Chapter six and the power of will. Chapter seven. So, join us next week. You'll be seeing this tomorrow uh, on on YouTube and on Facebook. So, join us next week for more discussions about keys to unlocking the inner power. Have a great day. Great night. See you then.